why I am intermittent fasting or technically time restricted eating. Um, so this is a thing that um, I heard of from Professor Tim Spector. He is the, one of the founders of a program called Zoe, um, who are doing interesting work on obesity and on weight loss and general gut health, most particularly on the gut flora, the microbiome that exists in your gut. Um, and he had a health care uh, and he tried various different interventions to sort that out. <clears throat> um, and one of the things he does is intermittent fasting, uh, most particularly time-restricted eating. He basically skips breakfast. There's not much more to it than that. Um, as it comes uh, well, when it comes to uh, to inspector, uh, and I was generally listening to podcasts about this um, and him talking. And I thought, oh, well, it's an interesting idea. Never really tried to skip breakfast. Uh, how, how would it feel doing it? Um, and I thought, well, I, there's not much to lose, really, trying to skip breakfast. It's just one meal in the day. What's it going to feel like? I'm going to stop if I'm too hungry. I've got the opportunity to bail out if I want to. It's not an idea of... I think you get a bit too het up sometimes skipping meals and end up skipping too many. Um, but I thought with caution, I'd go forward and give a go. Uh, so one day I just skipped breakfast um, and it was surprisingly fine. No problems, actually. Um, and since starting to do it, I've realised that I'm not actually hungry till about 11. That seems to be a fairly common thing, actually. You, a lot of people aren't really hungry in the morning. They get to 11 a.m. and then they start feeling hungry and need some food in them. There's a walker, so I'm going to pause here. So you get to 11 and then you're hungry. And then you just eat your lunch. Have an early lunch. And then that takes me through pretty much to tea time. I might have a snack in the afternoon, usually about four o'clock. Not usually a big snack, just a, or whatever I feel like, really. Um, but as you know, I don't eat junk food, so not anything ultra-processed, no crisps or um, chocolate bars or anything like that. Maybe some dark chocolate. It doesn't have lycopene in it. And the other side of that coin, if you're following time restricted eating properly is to not eat past a certain time to extend the fast a bit longer so in my case last night I finished eating about 7.30 I think I had a little snack after tea um, and that was it and at the moment it's about 10 in the morning oh, it was earlier than that it's about 8 in the morning Wishing the time away. I am a bit hungry today, actually. Sometimes I do feel a bit more hungry in the morning. Uh, perhaps because I've been thinking about it and obsessing over it. Um, today, I'm choosing to ride the hunger wave out and see if I can get past it without obsessing too much. Um, but normally, if I was really hungry in the morning, I would eat, i just have some breakfast. So when I started doing it, I was, uh, I was managing to do it without problem, uh, maybe five days out of seven. So usually on a busy day, I'd not have breakfast. I'd have a lunch when it got to about 12. Um, I'd be teaching all morning or similar. 
uh, and that was pretty easy to do. You get hungry around lunch and then you have a decent lunch. Uh, and that's seeming through. So it did get me thinking about whether breakfast is really a thing, really. I mean, we think about all these products, these breakfast products, cereals and things like that. I don't know whether, historically, people used to actually eat breakfast. Um, I don't know enough about that. Maybe you could tell me. Either way, um, I find it unnecessary most of the time. If I'm honest with myself, if I wake up and I don't feel hungry, I won't eat. Um, and I'll eat when I do feel hungry, which is usually about 11. Very beautiful out here, by the way. Just started to get frost. There's a bit of lovely frosty bits on the bad wire. Lovely frosty farm. Nice frosty trees. It's very nice. So, uh, intermittent fasting. I have also been reading out <coughs> more techniques and more about the subject because obviously if you're on it you should research it and find out what the effects are likely to be on you. I've been reading uh, Michael Mosley and I'm going to get name wrong. Um, I've forgotten the other name of the other author I'm afraid uh, but she sounds great. Um, the Fast Diet is called uh, Michael Mosley is a BBC reporter who started investigating the fast diet for a Horizon program, which I've also watched. Um, he was looking at calorie restriction and particularly uh, calorie restrictors that, for example, will just eat all the peels of apples and berries and things for their breakfast. So they have a smaller breakfast, but it has more bulk. That can have the idea a bit like Slimming World, really. Um, and... He came across fast diets, so, for example, uh, not eating for four days once a month, uh, four days straight, with no food, apart from, I think it was about 100 calories worth a day. So a little bit of food, just to keep the system happy, but uh, the rest of it is downtime and... Uh, the benefits of that on things like HGFN1, which is, um, was HGN1, I remember. That's the growth hormone that uh, is often responsible for things like cancer um, and obesity and things like that. And fasting cuts that down. That's another walker. I'll say hello before I carry on. Where was I? Um, so, and it's remarkably effective for that, this four-day diet. But it also is a bit of a punishment, I think. And that's why Michael Mosley didn't carry on with it. Uh, instead, he came across the 5-2 diet. 5-2 is when you eat normally, whatever you like, for five days. And then for two days... You don't eat anything, or you eat maybe 100 to 200 calories um, for two days. They can be consecutive, one after the other, or they could be at different times in the week. It's an intriguing idea, because it, and you do it every week. And it's an intriguing idea because it fits in with most lifestyles. You can do it at work, for example... If I had a really busy day, um, I could do it then and then I wouldn't think about food much. Um, and I'd get the benefit. Oh, there's another doggy. Hey, doggy. So, the 5-2 diet, you have a couple of, I think he exists on a cup of soup a day for his four day diet and similar amounts of food for the two days that he was off for his 5-2 diet. And he seemed to feel that that was something that was sustainable. Uh, the rest of the time he could eat what he liked, drink what he liked, and that's absolutely fine. Um, and he lost weight and 
gained metabolic health. So it was in the diabetic range. Um, and reading his book about it, uh, it's very interesting. Um, if a little scant on the scientific side. Um, it's an idea that intrigues me since I've started time-restricted eating uh, because I feel that works quite well for me too. Um, I don't know if it is more than just calorie restriction really, uh, having less calories in. It does seem to have other benefits, there's another chap here, Alan. The other benefits according to Tim Spector and the like are that you <coughs> allow your gut chance to clear up. There are different bacteria in your gut. There are guts that uh, break down your food and allow it to pass through your cell memory walls. And there are guts, there are bacteria that clear up when there is no food to uh, digest. So they go and repair the lining of the wall. They uh, do other checks and balances. I really don't know the exact processes, but according to Tim Spector, at least, it's good for your gut flora to have a period of fasting where you give your system a break from eating and digesting. And I think that probably makes sense, um, thinking about it and thinking about the effect it has on you. I think probably your body does need... Um, a chance to catch up, especially if you're pounding it with food every day. Um, just getting all the waste out of the system, uh, addressing the pH balance, things like that. Um, and you indeed, oh, it's a road. Indeed, you do fast at night when you're asleep quite a long period when you don't eat normally um, and time restricted eating just extends that period and that's why it's a lot less painful than uh, not eating all day because you've finished eating make sure you're all full around about 7 seven thirty to 9 um, and then you uh, go to bed a reasonable hour. I never go to bed at a reasonable hour. It's my problem. And then uh, you don't feel hungry till 11 the next morning and then you've had a 14 hour fast, I think. Nine, nine to 11, 14 hours. That's long enough. But today I've had a bit longer. If I start eating at 11, it would be more like a 16 hour fast. Morning. a very popular dog walking area this I should find places that are quieter to do videos really um, <clears throat> yeah so it's an intriguing concept time restricted eating you should just eat what you like in your on period which is um, for my case between 11 and 9 usually just eat to satiety um, I tend to eat healthily as much as I can, um, so I don't eat ultra-processed food, make all my own food from scratch, um, apart from 70%, 80% chocolate, which I get from the shop, which is not ultra-processed, it just has cocoa beans, cocoa butter and sugar in it, and I do allow myself sugar because think completely cutting things out of your diet is a recipe for bad news in my opinion. I think you'll in the end crave them and when you get hold of them they'll be your undoing. It's a bit like alcoholics if you uh, go cold turkey on alcohol then uh, you end up having a drink at a party often that'll lead to a relapse. So I'm not interested in having a relapse. I'm interested in moderation on that front. So I will have some sugar. I won't have lots. I'll only have the f sugar that I put in food. 
I won't have sugar that other people have put in food to make me eat more of that food. Um, I'll make myself cookies, make cookies for the kids, um, and enjoy those. And I'll have my open window and my closed window a fasting state, which I quite enjoy. I quite enjoy being in a fasted state most of the time. Uh, occasionally you feel hungry, more hungry than you want to. And most of the time I'll eat, if that's the case. If um, I can't, or if I'm in the middle of something, I'll just ride it out. And usually hunger pangs go away after a short, short while. It's not necessarily a good thing that they do, but they do. Um, so you've got to hang on in there and just remember that you can just eat as much and whatever you like when you're in your food period. I might try the 5-2 at some point. Um, just as an adjunct, as a different thing. I know that this is working for me now. Well, I say I know it. I still haven't weighed myself or quantified the benefits. I think it is important and difficult to have some um, somebody check up on you when you're doing these things, especially if you're trying a, a fast and if you're going too deep into it. So maybe doing six to eight days or longer on a regular basis. Um, even doing four days or doing the five two, it's worth finding a doctor to keep an eye on you, check your levels, and check you're not doing yourself some harm. Unfortunately, I find that impossible in this country to find a doctor that you can see regularly enough um, to keep an eye on your vitals. And to talk about this kind of thing, everyone's, all they're interested in is doing a bit more exercise and cutting down on the calories, uh, which obviously doesn't work, to my opinion. Um, so, I would like to see a doctor about it, but I haven't. I'm not a dog walker. So, it would, I am going to schedule an appointment when I've got a bit of time to just talk about these issues with my doctor. I don't know how to take them. Um, a few times I've talked to him about uh, a weight and about exercise. He seemed happy that I was doing some exercise, um, but didn't seem to want to be drawn on what to do diet-wise. I think I'm a little bit scared of prescribing something, really. Um, also, my levels are fine. My cholesterol's fine. My, um, my obviously my weight is bad, and my BMI, and my waist size, my, uh, my glucose levels aren't unduly spiked. I'm not diabetic, as far as I know. I'm not even pre-diabetic yet. But I get the feeling my doctor is waiting to pounce on that front. So, um, just the weight the moment. Hi. Hello. How are you doing? All right. Morning. Morning. Beautiful day. Have a nice wintry day. Once you get your heart rate and you're not cold. Um... Do you have anything else to say about intermittent fasting? Try it with caution. Go in with an open mind. Don't try to restrict yourself too much. Don't get obsessed with it. That's what I'm trying not to do. I'm not trying not to go down the rabbit hole of obsession and trying to restrict myself too much. I'm trying not to lose weight quickly. I think it's very important because I don't want to yo-yo back up again. Um, I'm enjoying it and doing the bits that I enjoy. It's fairly painless to me. Um, so I think that's important for a sustainable approach to diet. Um, doesn't restrict the foods I like and doesn't um, take a lot of time out of my day. And the, the opposite, it gives me more time. It makes me bored in the morning. <laughs> quite a lot of the time 
while I'm out for a lovely walk to take my mind a fit. And uh, yeah, I think it's a good thing. We'll see, I guess. Maybe I'll find an update in a year's time. Bye, enjoy the, there's some fast road here. There we go, lovely view.